Hello, I'm Susie Feist, and I'll be interviewing Greg Williams, the equestrian coach at Auburn University. So, what was your major in college? Uh, animal science. Here at Auburn University. Right. Awesome. And I got um, a adult education much later, but uh, I've always been in involved in the animal side. <laughs> uh, what is a day like as an equestrian coach? Uh, well, right now they're very different. It's uh, different from anything we've ever experienced before. So we might talk a little bit about that as I, as I walk you around. Um, we usually start typically as our season begins as, as a coach. We Our workouts start at 545 in the morning. Uh, we're actually housed with football, so we work out at the football weight room. And uh, those strength coaches uh, put our whole team through the workout. And we're a large team. We're the largest women's team in Auburn with 40, uh, used to keep around 40 team members. This year, depending on how our season goes, we might stay around 36. But um, So it's a big group, and they fit in that facility well. And then they usually head to class, and then we start practice sessions. And you're going to be out here for a two-hour block. We keep it divided up so that you can go through um, – you know, a different, different section. So the arenas don't get too crowded. We run a minimum of two arenas at the same time, uh, all afternoon. Then usually we'll have a team meeting like on Monday nights and then they start working with their tutors in the evening. So they're full days. Awesome. What is the well, best thing about they, your job? Like when they're in school, we're then in the office doing all that kind of stuff. So, um, as soon as our workouts are over, we're doing our meetings and, and uh, all the background work, and then we all head to practice for the whole afternoon. Okay. So what's the best thing about your job? Uh, the students. Um, being a horse person, though, you know, you, you love the horses. But uh, for me, it's always been about the students. I, uh, I'm really an Auburn kid, and, and Auburn wasn't known for the horse industry, uh, you know, early on in my career. And so I'd moved off. I was a professional trainer. And never dreamed I could come back to Auburn and raise my kids here. Um, but uh, a job came open in animal science, and we were trying to build a horse program. We were working on that. And um, that continues to grow. We've just hired a, a new faculty member that's going to be working in the teaching program this year. So uh, keep your eyes out on, on her. Um, we will be uh, – but then I uh, – God got to come back here and started the team and have been just blessed to be able to uh, to work with students and horses. Probably my favorite thing about all of it has been Auburn, the, 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 the town, the town and university I know and the sport I, I know is known all over the country now. So I love that part. Yeah. <laughs> um, what sort of championships have you received? Uh, well, we've won the SEC championship. We've won um, several times. We've won six national championships. We were on the way to win the seventh national championship when um, COVID hit. They did still award us the regular season SEC championship, but without being able to play in that national championship, we had we were undefeated. I mean, we'd already beat everybody. We're going to be playing at the national championships at least once. Uh, had a good slate of judges. We were so excited to get to go play in this. And so I, I really feel like this would have been one of our strongest national championships. So that would have been our seventh one. So we've um, we've won a lot of them. We've got a lot of individual accolades. We've got over 90 uh, All-Americans. We've got uh, – we've won individual titles. And so I feel like we've won everything there is to win. And uh, – the most important thing is always talk about planting a seed that you're never going to shade under. So the biggest thing I want is the foundation. The title I want the most is the national championship that's won by Auburn when I'm no longer the head coach. Then I'll know we've done it right. <laughs> uh, what sort of workout routine do the ladies on the team do? Well, the strength coaches change it up a pretty good bit. Um, but it usually starts off, again, they're a very large team, so they'll start off in the indoor uh field which is 100 yards indoors and they stretch two to three lines widthwise on that football field and uh they run them through a whole series of warm-ups and then they might be doing a lot of drills um out in there or they might have right after um the warm-ups they can head straight into the weight room and the weight the what they're doing in there changes all the time but once they once they've all learned how to do it they teach a lot of technique 
But then it gets fun when they know what's going on. They turn the music up real li- loud. And I mean, they don't let them just slowly walk. They literally have to be hustling from uh, right to the field to whichever piece they're doing. I mean, so as they finish the set, they're they're kind of slow jogging to the next one. They don't get to walk. So, I mean, it, it looks like you've kicked an anthill over with loud music when they're working out. It's 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 pretty, pretty motivating. Um, how long have you been coaching? Well, I started the team in 1996. Um, I mean, we're, we're recruiting kids now that we're, that the, the juniors were now allowed to talk to them. They're all born in 2004, so it's just amazing how long it's been. So we were a club team for six years. We, ne- we didn't go varsity until 2002. So I started in 96, went varsity in 2002, and um, – and just add those years up. So it's been 18, uh, I'm sorry, 20 years now. No, 18 years as the varsity coach and then add another six. So that's, that's oh. the for a while. <laughs> um, what's the biggest challenge you faced when competing? Uh, you know, that that varies. That's, that's a, a good question. It depends a little bit on the on the team that you're facing. I would say the greatest challenge, though, is just your team dynamics. It took us a while to really get on the map and have the recruits build a program that you're really, you know, you're really getting the top recruits across the country, which we do now. So the biggest thing I look for now are those that are really going to be able to be team first type players. Um, Something if you all throw a little bit of advice in here with this is is finding players also that want to be coached and can take the truth. Um, there's a, there are some that have changed trainers anytime they start hearing things they don't want to hear. And they kind of have that habit. You've got to, you've got to have, you got to be with a trainer that's good. Um, you know, our high school coach is good in, in whatever you're doing, but you got to have some coaches that are going to be honest with you. And if they can't be honest with you, you're not going to be better. So I do tell some parents, I'll say, listen, you know, you, you have to sit down with them. These trainers are got to treat you like clients, but if you want your kid to be good, then, um, you got to have them, you got to have them push some. I used to think that the reason some of our, our um, best kids were the daughters of professionals and um, they've ridden since they were little. I thought they've had to ride everything in the barn. And it is true. They've had a lot of opportunity. They ride a lot of horses because, you know, it's their parents' occupation. But what I've really come to realize is they've just been told the truth from the get go because their parents weren't worried about hurting their feelings. So, um, I, I think honesty is something you need to do and you need to have that conversation with a coach or trainer just so they know you have, they have your permission, you know, and that doesn't mean being hard on them or anything, but it just means not just telling them stories just so, you know, they'll keep paying you for, for lessons and training. Yeah. Um, do you want to start walking to the barn, maybe? Sure, the absolutely. Barn. I've got, like, three questions Enough left. Pass. Got to pass somebody, so I got to mask up for a second. This is our new world. <laughs> uh, All right, so that was, actually, I could have shown you. Well, so Morgan walked in. I'm going to go back and show you. This is our training room in here. Now I'm going to and take this off. This is our team room. Everything right now we're getting designed for um, the traffic flow that we've got to do during COVID. You know, we were uh, the first part of uploading. We're going to make sure that people aren't just congregating in buildings. We've got this blocked for our locker room. We're not going to use flowing but they can get to the restrooms get through the training room you can see some of our national championship six of our national championship trophies right there those are something we love so um sec championship trophies right here so we're very proud of those now we're yeah. going to go ahead to the barn and this is uh Coming up on our barn out here. We're blessed. You talk about being here for a long time. Um, they they named the barn 
after me and my family, which I appreciate. Hang on one second. Dad stopped them from working for just a second. So this is our barn. We've got tie stalls like this, grooming stalls inside. Go ahead and show you the back. So we've got more tack up areas out here. Is that showing up on there? I'm looking away from it, so. Yes, sir. Okay, and then our walker, the walker's a gated walker and you can walk, trot, can them in either direction. Just set a, you can even set a timer on it and let it run. Um, so, then our stalls are nice. We've got covers. If we have a horse that's, you know, not barn friendly, we can actually put a yoke cover right here. We've got automatic waters in the back. We've got uh, the stainless steel feed troughs. And with automatic waters, you sometimes don't know how much a horse is drinking. But if you look up here, we have digital readouts that uh, will say how much the horses are drinking. And that is uh, quite a blessing. It's like can uh come on nine stops so you see we've got this covered up so he can't stick his head out and grab somebody so this is our farrier bed area we've got the theraplates which those are what you know they vibrate stimulate circulation they really help a lot i'm gonna head back down the hallway where they're working here and I'll show you our tack rooms quickly we've got an extremely good fire ventilation system we've got everything's built out of stone but we do have some wood up above you can see on our ceiling so were there to be a fire in here huge vents open up on the back place a, a fire suppression system will put it out instantly then these huge vents open up and um pull all the smoke out so a horse cannot die, die from fire or smoke inhalation in this barn so this is our our hunt seat tack, uh, tack room everything is uh temperature controlled so that's really nice it's cool in here and we keep it warm in the in the summer we've got ipads in each one and those are so you can look up anything you need to know about any horse for practice what kind of wraps what kind of boots what bit to put in on them and also the work and stuff that the riders might be doing um, that we keep a list every day that, that stays on those iPads and they can go through that. And as they check it and refresh it, it refreshes both iPads in both tack rooms. So they kind of can keep up with who's getting what done. So this is our Western tack room. And we also have, we've got labs, we've got feed rooms and, you know, it's a, uh, it's been a dream to have this barn. We've got wash racks on the um, inside wash racks. We've got wash racks on both ends of the barn so we can get everything knocked out really fast. It's just been an amazing, amazing situation for us. So, but uh, the girls through the past have earned it. Wow. Um, here's a question. Do you have a favorite horse? Do I have a favorite horse? You know, I every now and then I do. I kind of like the ones with uh, personalities. Um, but I think I think the ones that I like really as a coach are the ones that are kind of performing consistently and, and uh, that our riders can get the kind of ride that they're expecting out of them. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. It changes. It changes. <laughs> the girls definitely uh have have all sorts of favorites that they like to ride and they're not all the same some of them like the quirky ones some of them just like the steady ones and so uh i think probably every horse out here is a favorite by somebody <laughs> um okay this is the last question okay what advice would you give a youth interested in your job um, in my job, it's still going to be the same thing. It's just being a, a good rider. You're going to need to be in the industry. You're going to have to, um, compete. So I would say you're going to need to set a career path of, uh, working for trainers and, and getting a lot of, a lot of experience as a, as a professional trainer. 
Um, you're definitely going to have to have a degree either way. But even if you're saying, well, I don't want to coach, but I want to be in the horse business, the biggest advice I tell people is you got to make college career part of your training because it's very hard to maneuver later in life, you know, and if you're going to do any kind of job that's hard and risky, like being a professional athlete, a professional trainer or music singer, you know, you can say, well, I don't need a degree to be a professional horse trainer. But if you ever try to change later on, it gives you a safety net that you get to chase any tough dream you want. And so that, I think that's an important part of the of a, of a college career. It kind of gives you the freedom to chase anything you want. And then if you do just decide to change uh, careers, you're prepped for it. All right. Well, that'll be it then. Um, any other notes to add? No. When we get when. Uh, we get back to where we're having uh, fans back at events, which uh, I would imagine we might be able to do that this spring. So come see us ride. All right. Uh, I'll look into doing that. Okay. <laughs>